Is the Mormon God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. And today we have Grace Earl here from Idaho. Yes. Appreciate you guys coming down, and we're going to get to meet Lance next. And um, anyway, we appreciate you coming and sharing your story, and it's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where does it start? Where were Where, you born? <laughs> Where does it start? Well, actually, I was born in Tacoma, Washington. Okay. Um, I actually am the oldest. I have a sister that's 14 months younger. Okay. And... Uh, I lost my parents both when I was fairly young, five when my mom passed away, and nine when my father passed away. And he was in the passed, military. Your mom passed of cancer? Yes, my mom passed or... away from cancer. And your dad? And my dad, he was in the military, Air Force, so he was gone quite a bit, so I didn't really get to see him a lot, but he, uh, he passed away from a heart attack. Oh, gosh. I always... Young man, really, huh? I, <laughs> judging from what my grandparents always talked about, my mom and him, I always figured he died of a broken heart. <laughs> oh, very, you know, so very but, possibly. <clears throat> so your grandparents actually raised you? Yes. Yeah, yes, my in... mom's parents. They oh, raised my sister oh. and myself. And oh. uh, I feel really blessed that they took that on because that is actually for us older people that's actually a big calling you, that you could see that would be a big calling now, well it, right? it really to would on two people. you know you hear your your own kids are grown up and gone and and out and then you all of a sudden more. you have two more kids and now, i was five my sister would have been four so oh that's gosh, that's a yeah long-term commitment it that, is that was sweet of them yeah it really really was so were they lds no they oh. were not lds um I couldn't even tell you what, what they religion were. they would have oh. been. They didn't go to church. They believed in God. Uh -huh. And I remember growing up, we'd listen to uh, every Sunday, Lawrence Welk. <laughs> and my favorite part of Lawrence Welk was always uh, a couple named Guy and Rolna. They always sang the gospel songs. Yeah. I loved those. And uh, <laughs> so we did have neighbors that would go to church and every once in a while they say hey can we take your kids to church no mormon church or a christian not mormon church okay. it was actually the methodist church okay. and that is the church that my mom apparently had gone to was a methodist oh, church okay. so my sister and i uh we'd go from time to time and i don't remember that we went a lot i don't Remember, really, I mean, I was pretty young, That's but right. something apparently stuck in my brain because as I got older and after I joined the Mormon Church, um, <laughs> there were a lot of things that kept popping into my head and I couldn't oh, figure out why. Strange, strange things, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, so um, were your folks LDS at all? No, they weren't. So no. had you ever met any LDS up there? In, when I was in Colorado? high school, I had... A boyfriend in my senior year that was Mormon but he was inactive oh. but his mom was very active and uh, she and I became very good friends mm -hmm. and then of course after we graduated high school he went his way and I kind of mm -hmm. went my way but it was amazing those Mormon missionaries they know how to find you <laughs> I I would go to live in some apartment buildings and pretty soon I'd go somewhere. Oh, I'd lived with an aunt for a while. And then I yeah. went to my own apartment and stuff. Well, come to find out, after I'd moved, the Mormon missionaries had finally caught up to find out where I had been. Okay. And then pretty soon, so they just kept kind of going. Chasing you down. <laughs> Chasing right? me down a little bit. So yeah. is that what happened? I mean, you were at, now out of high school and, and you're on your own, and I the was, missionaries came to the door? and It wasn't the missionaries. It was oh. actually ward missionaries. Oh, it was a okay. young couple. This young woman with a baby came to my door one day at my apartment, and she had a loaf of nice homemade fresh bread. Oh, really? And I very kindly thanked her and kind of shut the door because <laughs> like, I had no idea who she was. Right. And uh, I 
didn't think I was being rude, but she told me later after we became friends that she felt went home and cried. <laughs> that <laughs> thought, you had oh, shut the so, door. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of did, but not really. I don't know. I. So I mean, how? Somewhere along the way, the church comes up and yeah, and they yeah. encourage you or ask you to take the lessons. Well, <clears throat> lie number one. <laughs> she had a father that was from Texas and he was up visiting and he was very much against Mormonism and she asked him if she could invite a friend over so that they could have the missionaries over so that they could teach me the discussions oh, but to have a non-member to present. have a non-member present well she comes to me and says my dad is here, and I want him to hear the discussion. Tells both of you the same. Exactly. She said, uh, uh, can you just come over and be with him so he doesn't feel like he's out of place? Well, I think it was more that the missionaries were there for me, not him. <laughs> <laughs> so well, he killed two birds with one stone, so to speak. Um, I mean, get you yeah, both. well, he never, he never joined the church. <laughs> okay. um, so we started having the missionary discussions, and after about the fourth discussion, I think it was, they say, hey, you know what? We think you're ready to be baptized. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> I was young. I was very, I don't know, I think because my grandparents had raised us and with just my sister and me, we were very protected. So I, I yeah. was pretty cautious and stuff, but as also very withdrawn and didn't know how to tell people no at all. Yeah. And so I just said, mm, okay. And, well, I don't know if they still do it or not, but back then you had to have an interview sure. before you could be baptized. Oh, yeah, they baptized. still do that. They still do it, okay. In well, fact, probably, I only got baptized probably at least two levels of interviews, probably. Okay, still. yeah. So anyway, he asked me all kinds of questions before I was baptized, and he asked me one question that was, I felt extremely personal. Yeah. And um, so lie number two, I told him. What do you want to I hear? <laughs> he, I told him exactly what he wanted to hear. Uh, I wasn't going to be forthcoming with him because I just really felt it was not. Felt his, uncomfortable. Well, with that, I was yeah. extremely un felt uncomfortable, and sure. I didn't feel like it was any of his business. Yeah. If God was real, it was between me and God, not me, him, and God. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so I kind of lied. and. But, but you do end up getting baptized. I, I did get baptized. Um, I, I look back on it now, and I, I don't feel like I was converted to Mormonism. I just joined the Mormon Church. <laughs> Yeah, so your so. testimony, I mean, had you read any of the Book of Mormon or your New oh, Jersey Smith story? I would, read, I would read it and I'd hear the stories and a few things, but yeah. there was something inside that just couldn't quite grab onto it fully. Hmm. I, I just couldn't quite do it. Now, at so. some point in the next short time amount of time, you meet your husband to be. I did. And I joined the Mormon Church. February 21st, <laughs> I'm trying to think here, 76. Oh, okay. And um, then in July, they had a, a young adult conference up at Crystal Mountain. Mm -hmm. for, and it was a area thing, so it wasn't just our stake. It was several stakes. And I had seen him at dances, and I'd always go, ooh, who's that good-looking guy? <laughs> well, we... Uh, we were up at Crystal Mountain, and, and we met over one of the meals, and we got talking and kind of ended up missing the rest of our classes <laughs> because that's all we did. We just went spent and talked time. and spent time and talked with each other, and yeah. uh, October 1st, we were married. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a very a... short time. Yeah. So, well. And I guess a year later, I understand you got sealed in the Ogden yes. Temple. Yes, exactly. One year later, yeah. on our anniversary, we went through the Ogden Temple and we were sealed for all time did and you, eternity. <laughs> did you sense that that was his goal and had that become your goal too, to obviously oh, be yeah. married in the temple? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I knew he had been raised LDS and uh, back then, uh, 
so many things have changed in the Mormon Church. I couldn't tell you if it's still the same or not. But back then, because I hadn't been a member for a full year, we couldn't go through the temple. Right, we, when you yeah, got married. Yeah, that's why right. we had to wait that year. Right. And, but I, I knew how he'd been raised, and I knew he's very much LDS, and I just wanted to be the best <laughs> wife I could be. Did you feel like your testimony of the church was growing? Did you feel more aligned with what you were hearing and being taught? There was some of the teachings that I kept thinking, that's really nice. I, I, that's, that feels really good. But then there were other things that would come up and I'd go, Hmm, I don't know if I can grab onto that yet or not. You know, I, yeah. I would always have to... Jesus, was that part of your thought process then? or Not quite so much back then. Yeah. Um, more about the church, it sounds It was like. more about the church back then. But as I got older and raising our children, we had five children, okay. and raising our children, it, it just started slowly clicking with me that Jesus wasn't there very much. You, there was always the that. church, the church this, the church that, Joseph yeah. Smith. But, again, knowing he was really strong, I kept thinking, you know, I got to be the good wife for him. I got to be the good wife for him. And yeah. so... And over the years, you had a lot of callings, right? Relief Society? Um, I, I was Relief Society secretary, and I did a lot in, home, well homemaking, whatever they call it now. Yeah, it was homemaking, and they had, back when I was pretty young, it was still four different things, you know, cultural arts and the actual homemaking and, you know, different yeah. different things. And Each so I, yeah, 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 and so I was one of the, the leaders in that part of it, and um, primary, and oh yeah, I was actually a choir director at one point, which oh, blew were. me away because... <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about music. I thought, what are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, sometimes our callings are pers perspiration, not inspiration uh, or something. Yeah. But, oh, I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So, so you kind of are going along, and uh, I guess at some point you maybe still questioning different little things along the way. Yeah. But what um, happens in life? Well, it seems like, as especially as my children were leaving the nest, the church started to make it more and more changes all the time. And every time they do it and they get up there in sacrament meeting and make their <laughs> little announcement of the new change and stuff, I'd always sit there and I'd go, wait a minute. And there again in the back of my head, I would hear this little thing saying, but God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> and it would keep popping up and it, it just really bothered me to hear all these changes, and that's when I really started struggling more and more and more, but I didn't let Lance know. I just didn't let him know because I still wanted to be that good Mormon wife for him. Yeah. You know, but they, it was really starting to bother me to know that there were changes being made that shouldn't have been be, being made. Yeah. Not, if it, not more, if it uh, was... And a few more now than, than oh ever before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Things that are quite surprising. Yeah. So what, uh, anything specific that you started dealing with? And, and where was Lance at this point? He's still very active. He's and, still very active, and he'd get up, and every fast and testimony meeting, he'd bear his testimony, and he'd always elbow me. You getting up this Sunday? Turn, yeah. You getting up this time? And I, no, nope, not going to do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I didn't have a testimony to stand up and bear like I would hear. In fact, I actually, I really disliked fast and testimony Sundays. Yeah. I would hear people getting up all the time, bearing their testimony of their travels or oh, yeah. their illnesses and all these different things. And I I just never heard testimony of Jesus, and I couldn't, I couldn't go up there and do that. I just couldn't do it. The one time I did bear my testimony was in 2004, oh my <laughs> a long goodness. time ago. You remember this specifically? Well, I do. <laughs> I do, because I had broken my leg. Oh. We were building a home, and I had broken my leg. And um, after I'd gotten home from the hospital, because I was in the hospital for a few days, I broke it pretty bad. My, 
I'm sitting there and it's fast and testimony meeting and so I get up but my testimony was feeling Jesus' arms around me hmm. as we were going to the ER because I can remember no pain but just the warmth of his arms around me and really? comforting me all the way into the which was an hour away. And that was the testimony I special feeling. It was the testimony I bore because it was of Jesus. I knew it was Jesus. I couldn't do And that's what you shared with them. That's what I shared with them. It was just short, sweet and simple. (laughs) But it was of Jesus. About Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well what kind of happens to to bring you a little further along here? Well, um, our little community that we live in, I have to say, God bless little communities. (laughs) Um, They're very, very close and very close-knit, especially this one, because even the teachers at the little school and everybody, it's like they grew up there, they went off to college, and they come back. And so they were so close, and it seemed like any time anybody from outside would come in and move in, it's almost like, whoa, let's, take le- t- let's be careful here. Somebody's trying to, you know, yeah. get into our little close-knit group. And the community is such that if you go along with their beliefs and, and their thinking, whether it's political, religious, or whatever, hey, you're yeah. in. Yeah. But heaven forbid, if you're not in and you keep your mouth shut, okay, we'll we'll live with it. But if you start saying anything and speaking out against what they say, yeah. whether they're right, wrong, or whatever, it doesn't matter, then you become the black mark. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened to us. Um, people started accusing, especially Lance. I don't know why he was the target, because I'm <laughs> part of it too, but... It, it, they just kind of started accusing him, making him the thief or the liar or whatever it was. In the community. Yeah, in the community. And it's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And so things just really started going downhill from there. And we still would go to church and do our callings and all of this stuff. And when he became really political... It just got harder and harder. It, it really did, because yeah. I, he would even take uh, quotes from high church leadership <laughs> and, and take those. their information and say, this is what the prophet would say, and they'd get mad at him, <laughs> and it would get worse and worse. And I just saw my husband going downhill. Um, there were a couple years there that... I call them black years because I could see the really dark something was going on. And it it literally scared me. I was working full time in American Falls and I know he was having an especially hard day. And I'd come home and I'd go, I hope he's okay. (laughs) You know, I just, it scared me. Well, so were there religious questions too that would come along to you or what? No. 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 But you were eventually determined that the church is not what you Well, I I felt be. like it. I was especially during those two years, those black years. Yeah. I was at work and I slowly had started we could listen to our own radio and I had found K Love <laughs> on the radio and Christian listening music. Christian music. And I started listening to that music and it just really touched me. Actually, I think it really helped me through those two years when Lance was struggling so, so hard. And I would hear, okay, one of them was uh, Chris Tomlin's Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Oh, boy. I love that song. And I heard that song, and I thought, oh, yes, I've got to take this. So I'd go home, and I'd say, honey, listen to this song. And he'd listen to it, and he'd, "Hmm, yeah, that's nice. And I'm going, oh. Mor- Mormon ears. <laughs> Mormon e- Well, Mormon ears or something. I, yeah. Something wasn't right. Yeah. And it, it kind of went, oh, pop my bubble, you know. Because <laughs> I'd come home so excited about these songs, and I'd hear another one, and I'd bring it home. I'd say, hey, listen to this. Same reaction. Well, you were 
you were sensing a praising of Jesus and, and acknowledging Him as, as something more important than oh, yeah. what kind of you'd felt, I'm putting words in your mouth, but no. what you've been hearing in Mormon church, right? Right, because I was finally hearing all this praise of Jesus. And then we were still going to church, and we had a little primary class, four little girls, about four years old. And one day he says, you know, I don't remember ever talking much about Jesus to these girls. So we got the primary manual out that we had been given, and we started going through all the lessons. <laughs> and we're going, uh, okay, temple, family, mommy, daddy, brother, sister, you know, all these different things. Where's and we're going, Jesus, wait a minute, yeah. where's Jesus? And that's, I think, when it hit him more than anything. Where is Jesus in all of it? Wow. And I'm thinking... Oh, okay. So we continued on through these two years, really struggling. And then December of 2016, he comes to me, and he looked at me. And he goes, honey, I don't know if I can be Mormon anymore. <laughs> and I thought, hmm. hmm. <laughs> well, I, inside I was really excited. But at the same time, I thought, did somebody call him and get him all upset again? Because it seemed like that was happening a lot. People would call and, or Facebook or something, something and, and accuse him of something. And, and I thought, oh, maybe something happened. So I thought, you know, give me, a, give me a few days here, honey. Let me think about this. So I went off and I'm going, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, poor guy, I think I gave him a heart attack that he had to wait a few days because he, <laughs> he told me later, he goes, I thought you had to go get a divorce attorney or something. <laughs> he was worried about your He did, because he thought I was more Mormon than I was. And yeah. I'm thinking, oh, no, this is such an answer at a prayer that I didn't realize I had. Yeah. But it was definitely a prayer that he... That, that he could come around eventually, yeah, maybe yeah. see things as you yeah. kind of sensed. When did you buy the two, uh, the two Red Litter Bibles? Well, <laughs> What's that okay. story? I um, actually, about three or four days after he had told me he didn't, couldn't be Mormon anymore, I told him, I said, hey, babe, <laughs> I am all in. So he immediately got on Amazon, ordered two Red Litter Bibles, and when they showed up... When, he, when they showed up, we actually opened them up at our kitchen table. And we knelt down and we prayed and told God, whatever it takes, give us your truth. Give us everything you have. We will give you our job, our home, our land, our children, whatever it is. We need to know your truth. You know, I searched for a red letter Bible. I ended up at Tuesday morning and found one. Oh, okay. And I'd read just the red words of Jesus, and it affected me that same way. Yeah. It's just, we never talk. We don't know this stuff as Mormons. No, no. Yeah. But. And don't you feel, <sighs> what, would, what words would you explain how you feel? <laughs> it was so amazing because... After we prayed, we sat down and we opened up and started reading. It's like, you know what? We finally found him. Yeah. It was so amazing. Um, and isn't there such a freedom, uh, a, a sense of liberty? Uh, what would you say? It, well, the weight is gone. It seemed like no matter what I did as a Mormon, whether it was visiting, teaching, or even my calling. It's Sorry. never enough, right? It, it was never enough. I, I felt know. like I just couldn't. And even couldn't if you did it, it one month, you had to do it the next month or something. Uh, yeah, and I, I didn't always want to do it. And of course, then you feel guilty because you didn't want to go to your Disney teaching or whatever. It was just always burdensome, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it was so. Freeing. It's like, oh my gosh, I can finally breathe. Oh, and I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm wearing my cross. <laughs> I could never figure out all those years as a Mormon why I couldn't wear a cross. And I was always told, well, that's because Jesus is, he lives. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, he lives. But this is my reminder of what he did for me, yeah. and it never made sense. Yeah. And the I Bible could, certainly supports yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I never brought it up to him very often, but every once in a while I was like, why can't I get one? I'd see somebody wearing a cross, and I'd go, oh, <laughs> I want that. <laughs> So this so. has been a wonderful journey. Now, this has only been the last couple of years, right? Two and a half years. Yeah. We, we left Mormonism January of, or December 2016. Yeah. yeah, so it's... And what would you say to your family and friends and the Mormons that you... It's been a hard journey. might listen to you. In some ways, because of our Mormon family and friends, we've lost a lot. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, we've gained so much more. Well, in a relationship with... Our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with other Christians. We have gained so many new friends and family yeah. that we didn't have before. Most, but mostly our relationship. That's all we talk about. <laughs> we talk about well, I think Jesus it's so all the time. I'm proud of you that it's the two of you together with this, and I'm. Oh yeah. It's so t tough for those families that have we, one of them coming. Yes. Or not. We we know several <laughs> where they eventually have both come out, yeah. but it may be one to start with, and it's really caused a rift. So we we mm -hmm. know a few. Well, it's so hard, and and it's hard to tell them even, isn't it? Just mm. to, it is. Now you, I know, we're involved in a. A prison ministry and an outreach to Mormons and and actually Lance as I mentioned is going to be right I'm going to talk to him a little bit more right. about that but I bet that's been a wonderful experience I love going into that prison and talking with the women they are I know they're there for a reason because of something they did but I'll tell you their hearts are open and they are so loving I was very apprehensive going in the first time because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. You have to go through this training, and even Do the you? training leads you to believe that you've got to be careful of yeah. these women and stuff. No, you don't. I bet there's a lot of humility there in, is. A, in a setting like that, and isn't there? You see a lot of girls that are, well, actually I should say women. There are some that are even my age in there for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. But the humility and they just bear their hearts. And there's been a lot of tears <laughs> on both sides. Sure. Going in a there. Lot of soul searching, I'm sure, but you get to know the women too. Yeah. You you really do. And so when they get out, it's like, oh yay, you're getting out, but oh shoot, I'm gonna miss you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> You really get to love them a lot. Oh, good. Well, we'll get to hear more about that. But yeah, Lance any, will tell any you Any last minute something to family or friends? Well, Kids. actually, I just have to mention my name. Oh, yes, please do. Um, I was going to mention it, and I thought, well, maybe she doesn't want us to talk about no, that. But. I, I do. We, we had been out of Mormonism for a year, and we were coming home, I believe, from church, and... I just asked Lance one day, I said, so, do you feel like I've changed very much since we've been out? <laughs> and he looked at me like, are you kidding? <laughs> Absolutely, I do. A new creature. <laughs> he said, I can definitely see that you are new. And I said, then you need to call me by my real name. My name, I've always been Mindy to everybody. My grandparents had nicknamed both my sister and me when we were born. Melinda, right? My name is actually Melinda Grace. Oh, okay. And I told him, I said, you need to call me by my real name. I want to be called Grace from now on. That's so pretty special. I feel like if names can change in the Bible, <laughs> by golly, I can change mine too to my real name. Yeah. So I am Grace. But, That's... you know, for those that are out there, if they're wondering or questioning it all, don't hesitate to start looking because Jesus is there and he's just waiting for you. Yeah. He is so, boy, is he patient because if we <laughs> actually, you know, Moses wandered the wilderness for 40 years. That's how long you were in the church, right? That's how long Lance and I wandered in the wilderness of Mormonism. 
Mm -hmm. were 40 years when we came out. It was 40 years. Mm -hmm. But if we had actually... He didn't question before me. I was questioning quite a, quite a bit. Like I said, I was trying to be the good Mormon wife and do what I was told type of thing. But if you're questioning at all, if you hear something, don't automatically shut it down. Yeah. Don't be go blind. check it out. Don't be blinded. Go, go check it out. Exactly. Be like, like Lance's favorite. Be like the Bereans. <laughs> they listened to Paul. Yeah. And they thought, wow, this is awesome. Better go check it check out. It and they out. did. Yeah. And that's what the Mormons need to do. They need to not just rely on what their leaders are saying. They're men. They're fallible. Yeah. If you hear something, get check out there out. and check it out for yourself. You need to think for yourself. And you need yep. to turn to God because He will answer you. Boy, He sure answered us. Yeah. And I am so thankful. <laughs> freedom we feel oh freedom. grace thank you so much our time is gone but i sure appreciate you sharing and get thank to meet you. your husband here oh yes so, all right awesome Thanks. thank Thanks, you grace. we'll thank see you, you next time <laughs>